Hello, everybody. Welcome to Little John's Yarn. I'm Alicia. If this is your very first time here, like I always say, what we like to do, we talk about crochet, drink a little bit of wine, and I have my good friend that you might have noticed in the comment section, section, Aida, the crochet antiquarian. Did I say it right? Got it. She's on our show, and she brought tequila. Where's your cup? Where's your tequila at? So how are you doing today, my dear? Oh, so far so good. And it's only going to get better. <laughs> Oops, let's turn that off. <laughs> yeah, this is just me, you, and alcohol. So today <laughs> we're going to learn all about our friend Aida. Uh, She's going to teach us about all things, not all things, some things we don't know about, about crochet history. The very first time I seen this wonderful, beautiful, purple-haired lady, <laughs> I was amazed. You can be all bashful right now, but I was amazed <laughs> at all the information this lady knows. Completely shocked. And I'm like, you know what? She needs to be on this channel. She has her own stuff, but she needs to be on this channel so even more people follow her. So I'm just going to hop quickly into this. Would you like to introduce yourself and tell people where they can find you? Oh, well, where you can find me? Everywhere. Um, <laughs> I uh, So I am Aida. Uh, like she said, a crochet antiquarian, being that I'm a continuing student. I'm not an authority, but I'm a continuing student of our craft, its history, the fibers, the stitches, uh, just knowledge in general. Um, I love history. I love to research. So they go very, very well together. Um, Alicia did want to know about my name. By birth, my name is Christy. <laughs> but I'm called birth... Christy. <laughs> so if you see if she does that that i am one of the same aida is my performance name i got that name in uh, i think 2010 when i was belly dancing and we needed to start performing and it was suggested that we just pick a performance name so uh backstory on that um aida is a, an archaic nigerian war dance oh i didn't know that so um being the people, as people will tell me, the strong, independent female type that loves to dance, um, you know, Aida warrior, dancer, princess, whatever you want to call it. That's how we got that. And over the years, you just get used to people calling you that repeatedly, repeatedly. So I, that's what I use. <laughs> Can I call you Aida warrior princess instead? <laughs> you, you, I yes, go for it. <laughs> oh, okay. Um. Guys, there, if you don't recognize Aida's name, you might recognize Reclectic Goods. That's who Reclected she is on goods. YouTube. Yes. Oh, and I, what was I calling you for the longest? Recole recollect? Recollected? Yeah, like recollecting, like recollecting. <laughs> yeah, like remember those goods? You remember? Yeah, that's what I thought it was. <laughs> so before we get into it, I'm just going to hop into the comments. And there's a lot of people that are saying hi to you. Let's see if we I have, can you see the comments on your side too? I cannot. Like where do, oh wait a minute, hold on. Me. To the right of the screen and you'll see comments, something, something, something. You see a little side on it, uh, you can click the tab. Let me see, let me see. Oops. I don't want to leave. It's you won't leave, we'll find you. We'll find me. We we'll get, find me. I haven't seen blind stitches in a while. Hello, Alicia. Mm -hmm. Hi, uh, guests pay everybody in, wait. Hi, guests. Pay everybody in the chat. What's up? I mean, she's saying hi to everybody. Let's see. Hey, everybody, everybody. <laughs> From Deanne, we got a aloha, Chrissy. Okay, so it means Chrissy should be in the house. Hello, Miss Deanne. She's uh, one of my other followers. Okay, we got, hello, Wanda. Hi, Alicia. I finally caught your live. Hi to your guests. Hello. And another one of my faves, Wanda. Thank you for joining us on Facebook. Yeah. Vonda, she's one of the people that was an OG friend when I first started in the whole crochet field. Like, so she's pretty awesome. And what else? And one more. We'll say hi to another one of my Boca. faves. Boca. Yes. <laughs> Good afternoon. So are you ready for the tough questions? Okay. 20 questions. Throw them at me. Let's go. Let's see what you got. <laughs> How long have you been crocheting? so hard okay i had this conversation last night i have to let my age out right 
Mm. You can just say mm. the age you started crocheting, not how many years ago you were that age. Um, okay, my first exposure to crocheting was kindergarten or first grade. Uh-huh. And that was when we basically had the, you know, four-weight yarn, big hook, and we were making the curly Q um bookmarks. Bookworms. Yeah. So we we're making curly Q bookworms. You put little blue little googly eyes on them. So that was like kindergarten, first grade. Well, but they don't <laughs> teach crochet in school anymore. They don't teach it any was, like useful no, crafts. It was, it was part of, you know, we had as far as the day schedule, you had the little arts and crafts section. So I mean you mm -hmm. had to do your math, your reading, nap time, little artsy things. So yeah, that was literally the first my first true recollection was just learning to chain and then go back down the chain. So you got this curly Q bookworm and then we glued little googly eyes on them. Okay, so you've been doing this since you were a wee little more girl than, about more than uh, 40, 20 years more ago, than right? Years. More than 40 years. Let's put it it doesn't way. matter. You years. are the sexy purple-haired librarian. It doesn't matter. You're hotter than, like, I don't know, coals in a fire. So more than 40, took some time off, kind of picked it back up again in the early tweens, mm -hmm. and then through high school, um maybe a few years off in there from in the 90, well, late 90s, a little bit of time off, and then just kind of picked it up again. And, um, and how did you get into like that? Okay, you've been crocheting since a small child, but how did you specifically get into antique crochet? Because I've tried to follow older patterns, and I'm like, how, uh, how did you get into that? That was a can you make this? What was I the said, What were you looking at? It's like, I, so my friend said, who was into um, reenactments at the local mm -hmm. uh, museum. And uh, she wanted to know if I can make a pair of undersleeves, okay. which are called man manchettes. And I had no idea what that was in the first place. And then I had to figure out, okay, what time period are we talking about? Well, she's, you know, sometime in the 1800s. What? A, a what? And I just started searching and I found an image. Not really knowing what I'm looking at. I found an image. I sent it over to her. I said something like this. And she's like, yeah, that'll work great. I said, okay, let me see if I can figure this out. So that was where I went down the rabbit hole and trial and error and trial and error and why is this not making sense and um it just so happened which we will get to that i'm sure that first pattern that i did in 2018 2019 was from the godmother of crochet mm, guys we're gonna get back to her the godmother of crochet, this is, <laughs> we might even jump ahead but i'm gonna hold off for a yes, little bit yes. so, <laughs> did you, ahead, are, do you have it do you have it <laughs> yeah Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. So, basically, it's... Oh, wow. Oops, it goes this way. You, you, know, you know how I like it nice and close. Like that nice and close. Oh, that is beautiful. Oh, to get what are these stitches right. right in the but middle? What is that? That is an interesting... It, they're really just chain stitches and spaces. Where's my camera? There you it is. see. Because it but, looks so 3D. But, they, but the, yeah, but they puff. Because you you have it's the way you have to decrease and increase, it causes little puppies. And these are the, for under the sleeves. How would you wear it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, which this one's not finished off. I still need to put a row here and the proper little buttons. But mm -hmm. under under the ladies' sleeves, because bare arms was not allowed. So you wore an undersleeve. Oh. Now, we already talking about this, so we might as well go straight into the Godmother of Crochet. <laughs> so, was this your first experience with the Godmother of Crochet? Yes, this was. This was, um, this technically is a piece from her fourth book. Um, we should say her name. Miss Eleanor Riego de la Bronchardier. <laughs> I've read her name a thousand times and I will never say it. Mademoiselle, uh, Mademoiselle Riego, 
You'll see her as Eleanor Riego. You'll see her as Eleanor Re Riego de la Branche de is her full name. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yes. Yeah, we, we, we could talk for hours on her. So we maybe need to get back to the other stuff and we'll come back around to I that one. <laughs> but it was this, so. this was how I got into it. And I have been there ever since. And because of that one piece and not knowing what I was doing, um, I started studying. <laughs> okay. Your friend came to you to make these sleeves. Mm -hmm. well, how did she know? Why you in particular? Do you do any other like crafts or? Well, because I, I was doing the arts and craft weekend pop-up shows anyway, uh -huh. because I'm, you know, so I was like making your hats that big sun hat made that one mm -hmm. the, the um your little your close hat which one was that the 20s flapper well, is that the one that with the twisted thing? one or is that the juliet cap the juliet that one yeah, yes the juliet yeah i made the juliet and so i mean at that time i would crochet just about anything i saw that i liked so hats face scrubbies bath things yoga socks um anything but blankets i don't do blankets um tops this mm -hmm. is from uh, Crystal Crochet, uh, uh, Bag of Day Crochet. This is her cozy top. Um, things. So people knew that I did that. Plus my uh, costuming for uh, belly dance. I had a couple pieces that I actually crocheted for, you know, for that. So um, I was known, but not known, you know. <laughs> costuming. So that's, you crocheted and sewed and... Okay, we're just gonna skip. What are Crocheted all your hobbies? And sewed and beads and sequins and yeah, and belly dance and and belly what? dance and you know, list it all, girl. I, mean, I, it. I I can I can balance a sword on my head. Yes, that kind of thing. <laughs> While shaking your hips. Yeah. Okay. Jealous of you and Karen. You and Karen got some <laughs> hip magic. And I'm sitting here all oh, lazy, can't do nothing with these hips over here. I, you guys need like a crochet class for just us that we can do other than crochet. I've been trying to convince her, like, I want to learn how to do something. Well, that, yeah, that, that whole, yeah, the finger thing. Yeah. <laughs> you guys have some beautiful hands. Okay, show it off. Okay. <laughs> Could you show me some of the things that you've made? What what one of your favorite things that you've made? Um, crochet or otherwise? Both? Anyone? Ooh, both. Yes. Okay. Um. Well, let's go to the altered. Let's go altered art first. No, so okay. basically that's where I upcycle everything, which I seriously do. Since her so. name. Reclectic. Okay, so reclectic because I reimagine, redesign, repurpose, renew, and eclectic because I do way too much. <laughs> reclectic. And the goods is kind of reminiscent of the fact that I live in the Great Plains and we have the dry goods store, the mercantile go to the dry, you know, it's just a carryover okay. from that Wild West thing, I guess. So it's reclectic uh -huh. goods. It's the, the dry goods store. So. Okay, so does anybody recognize what this might be? Closer. Uh, it is, it's beautiful. It reminds me of the ocean. It's, what? what is it originally? This originally is a Tootsie Roll container. <laughs> With Tootsie Roll, seriously? This is a Tootsie Roll bank. <laughs> <laughs> This that was a gorgeous. That was a Tootsie Roll bank. And I have this thing about ocean themes. So we apply all kinds of strange fibers, reduce, reuse. You know what this is? Ooh. Is it something that holds fruit? Is it? Uh... Yes. Yes. It's the plastic produce netting. Yes. Uh, that is plastic if I didn't know who you were, I wouldn't have known what it was. <laughs> So plastic produce netting and seed beads make the best barnacles on the planet. So friends like to donate things. Tequila bottles. I Cheers. saw these and I and I said, these look like cannonballs. 
but I can't not do an ocean theme for some reason. I'm obsessed with ocean themes. Ooh, I might need you to interior design. The room I'm in right now <laughs> is a jungle. I would love to do my dining room because my mom says it's tacky. My house is tacky. Oh, but mine's so weird. It's pathetic. I got okay. a green but wall. I got a swing hanging from my living room. I would love an ocean in my dining room. That would be cool. So what else um, you got? Oh, I think this was my favorite. This thing is huge. Trust me. Uh, okay. So again, we're going to look, okay. Well, it reminds here. me of like a lost That's... treasure. Exactly. This is the lost treasure bottle. Is that what it's called? Yeah. This is one of my treasure bottles. And all of this here looks like it might be leather. It's not. This is scrap fabric. I have special glues that I use to stiffen them up. And but yeah, this thing's, you know. <laughs> it looks like leather. Wow. It looks like it should be leather or something like that. And not to leave the men out of it. You can't leave the men out. That is actually a horseshoe. Which I can see the horseshoe. I can't guess what else. Corona. Wait, is that what that is? Yeah, I said that's a smash up Corona thing here. We got I some see brake. That. Okay, we got some brake. These are actually brake parts. Um, there's a little tool and die thingy over here. Yeah, that's from my husband's garage. Went and stole things out of the garage. And he's probably like, <laughs> where's my so-and-so? I don't know. No, I was like, you know, so this whole big monster piece behind all that, that's these are brake parts, you know. The guys like those, but I, I like to upcycle um, horseshoes. It's an actual horseshoe. It's quite heavy. <laughs> weird, weird stuff like that. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So, okay. Crochet pieces. Okay. Put on your magnifying glasses. Okay. <laughs> I will hold them as close as I can because these stitches are small. Um, that means it's crochet thread, y'all. We're going thread. We're going thread. Yeah. Oops. Let me try to get my tag out of the way. Okay. So we'll hold it back. So we have a collar coming in. Beautiful coming collar. In, coming in. Oh, yeah. I can see the detail. I can't see the stitches, but we'll. Right there. The pause, stop. This is perfect. Now shift it in a circle. I can see like roses, leaves. Oh. So, have, so this one is called the um, British Emblems. So we have, where'd it go? We have the rose. Yep. There's the uh, Scottish, where'd it go? Scottish thistle, which is right here. If I can see it. Um, <laughs> that the, yes, okay. As soon as I'm looking backwards, um, the shamrocks, oops, the little clover shamrocks throughout that piece. I've always, how uh, crazy it is to put so much, it's not detailed, I'm, the word I'm looking for. But specific items in it, like you're saying, this is the rose, this is the so forth, and to design it into one pattern, that's amazing. Yeah, the, and so all of these thread pieces right here are um, Mademoiselle Riegos. Like, bought one. Ooh, I like this one. Show. I like the consistent pattern. It's, I don't know. It makes me want to rub it. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get it to turn. There we go. So we're going to say, but, um, and of course the thing with these collars, bam, the time period were worn like this. So. Oh, so the mat to the front got you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Figure that the ladies garments, the ladies, first of all, their hair was always up. Mm-hmm. And the back of your garment was probably less decorative. So you wore them collars tied in the front with either, you know, a nice pretty brooch pin or um, a ribbon to coordinate with your thing. So they're actually worn backwards to today's standards. Man, the border of, of it, I mean, it's all consistent stitch, but I love the little, how can I? I mean, that little, you, that, 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 thing? that. <laughs> not that part, but that part where your finger is. 
Yeah, right here. That little thing is so little. It's distinct. It's and it's really overall simple. It's just like you know, chain five, slip stitch, chain five, slip stitch, chain ten. So you get the drop down, all in the same you know same circle, and that just See, provides that's, that little, little that's spray. the gorgeousness of crochet thread. It makes everything look so much yeah. more delicate and complicated. Some of them are, yeah. <laughs> Some of them. Are. I mean. They're all complicated and long, but it's still this. Well, the way you read patterns is amazing, but like you said, it's a chain five, then a decrease, and a chain four, so it can go up and down. And but it yeah, looks so much more amazing when you do it 552 <laughs> times in a row with a hook that is this thin. Yeah, little micro. Yeah, like yeah. I'm getting ready to go back to the really thin stuff, back to like the size 13 hooks, which you barely can see. <laughs> Bless your heart. Okay, now I pretty much <laughs> asked the basic questions. The godmother of crochet. You found godmother her when you were making those cuffs, but yeah. did you fall in love with her then? What made you? Um. A, a ult okay. Well, so what did was I saw the pattern or I saw the image. Um. You, if you when you look at her items, her her designs, she hired woodcutters to make. You know, they didn't have photographs. So okay. all the images had to be printed. And because she was born into money, um, she hired the best woodcutters to make the blocks for the print. And some of her woodcuts are so precise that you can literally count the stitches. So you know, like what looks like to be a close-up, somebody actually sat there and carved out this little thing with, and you can count the stitches in the woodcuttings. So you're like, oh my God. So what what See, happened was wait wait stop i have well, another you have so much information so those vintage patterns i'm looking at were all stamps yes more or less yeah oh uh this one's a photograph because that one's later oh you got an example for us and as you're looking somebody said wow that would drive me batty <laughs> they would <laughs> She is batty. She got purple hair, so. <laughs> yeah, like looking for one of her newer ones. Somebody says, Wanda, fun fact, if you had money, the buttons to the dress were in the back. No money, buttons in the front. No service mm -hmm. to uh, servants to undress you. We got another. Yeah they, also, they were, yeah, they were masters of hidden buttons also. Oh, okay. So it's like. Typically, I mean, some fun facts. So typically, the bodice would uh, close up the middle, um, but you didn't want to see those. So what this portion here was actually like a flap. So it would connect here. It'd be, I mean, sewn in place. You have a center closure. This whole thing comes over here and has like hook and eye on the other side. So you can't see how it's actually put on until you go to take it off. You undo this, open it up, button, 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 button. But yeah, if you so didn't have I see a woman to <laughs> so if I see a woman today with buttons, I'm like, you're poor. Your buttons aren't in the back. Your buttons are exposed. <laughs> I'm too I'm too classy for you. It's like buttons down the back. Yeah, yeah. Well, we don't have that problem now because our garments aren't as fitted. So you can almost literally leave them buttoned and just slide it on over your head. Yes. But obviously, you know, throughout the 1800s, you could not do that because you had boning and everything was shaped. You weren't going to just slide it over your head. So okay. I didn't mean to get off topic, but back to the talk. <laughs> no, it all goes together. Um, anyway, I was trying to find a good. No, that's not. These are whole older, later ones. Um, so, yeah, the woodcuts and are how images were done, whether they were done in steel or whether they were done in wood. Uh, but her woodcutters were absolutely fabulous. So her images are almost photographs. They're, they're great. Book number four, which is where that came from. I jumped into that, had no clue what I'm looking at. I don't understand the language. It's like she's trying to talk to me. What are they saying? And in the beginning of her book, she puts prefaces in every one of them. You know, if you're having problems following blah, 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 refer to books one and two. Okay, now here's the kicker. She has already given you instructions in books one and two. She will not repeat them in every single book. 
You better you know. Back, you need to go back to book one and two if you want to know That's what I'm marketing. talking about. So I went, okay, can I find one and two? I don't even, I still don't really know who she is. I find book one and I'm like, oh my God. Okay, find book two. Oh, and that sent me down the rabbit hole. <laughs> So what think, year are these books published? Like she, her first one was in 1847 through 1877. Wow. In which time she period she put out 18 known crochet books and about the same number in knitting, tatting, and netting. Netting is interesting in itself. Um, but yeah, so she was a master of many needle art trades. Were there um, were there any other people putting out crochet patterns at this time? Yes, that started the the thing that really started with well, I think it's more like more crochet adolescence was the industrial revolution 18, you know, the 1820s into the 1840s. So with the availability of woven materials, more fabrics that the lower classes could also afford, the lower classes also want to look good. We can't pay for bobbin lace because it costs, it's still, bobbin lace is incredible, yeah. I'm not, you know, and it takes a very, very long time. Well, this thing that we call crochet is not new. It had been around, but it was just not prevalent. Mm -hmm. It was still meant, maintained predominantly for the lace trims on your hankies on you know very, very fine work is what it was the industrial revolution says hey i have a wider market base here and they want these items crochet was there at the time and came into its adolescence when it was most needed see a need fill a need so you have places like um, people like Miss Lambert. If you can read one of her patterns, more power to you. I still struggle with those. Um, uh, Mademoiselle Riego, she just said she saw the need and she went full bore on taking this knowledge and writing it out and starting to give us an actual vocabulary. Mm -hmm. Instead of just being mom, you know, sitting with your mom, sitting with grandma, um, sitting in the convent, whatever, they started to give it a vocabulary. And once so she they, named now, the stitches? She started naming some stitches. Mrs. Lambert started naming some stitches. Um, some ideas were were taken from both tatting and knitting. So there's some a while that things are being crossed over. They don't really know what to call them because they still were really using slip stitches and single crochets. So yeah. a double. So what we consider to be the double crochet was often just called the long stitch. Oh, that or leads me into. Or the treble would be the extra long stitch, because they didn't like. What do we actually call this? And it's why eighteen fifties sixties, they start to see the the European version of double crochet, in their terms, the double, the triple, mm -hmm. the quadruple actually start to be used as describing these stitches. And then it just, people start, okay, this makes more sense. The vocabulary is building, the vocabulary is building. And, you know, patterns aren't always easy to follow. They still aren't because... First, I was going to ask you, why, because you taught me a little bit, but I'm sure the rest of the other people, why is it so hard for us today to go back to a pattern that was made in... 1870 and try to follow it there are some terms that we use now that were not used then and vice versa uh, one of my favorites is to turn versus turn back okay so you're working like if you're making like, like this collar okay and mm -hmm. you come around you come to the end of the row now, modern patterns will just say turn. But that can be misleading. Older patterns will say turn back. 
The difference is, am I rotating the piece and continuing to work on that base in the round, or am I turning the piece and going back across that row? So if I have my foundation row and I turn back, I'll turn the piece over, I'll work back across the foundation row. If I'm not turning back, I will work the other side of that foundation row and continue to go around the piece. So it's more logical. Turn, so turn versus turn back. Things like miss or skip. I like both of them. You know, you skip a stitch or you miss a stitch. A, a stitch. Um, we also have the problem that until really the 1880s, it was U.S. or American terms were not as prevalent. And you will mess yourself up if you do not understand the, what side of the pond that pattern is written on. And it's very hard to tell because you have something that was written in the UK and Go Days Ladies magazine, Peterson's magazines, they just worked in league with that European one and reprinted the pattern. They didn't change it. They just reprinted it. So just because it was printed in the US does not mean it's US terms. That one blew me away time and time and time again because it would say double crochet. Yeah. Well, you know, there's a big difference between a single stitch, a single crochet stitch, and a double crochet stitch, right? There's a big yeah. difference. Yeah. 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 Um, so, another thing that you told me about, which threw me, when you said uh, with the older patterns, how the creator said they assumed that you knew things so they would mm -hmm. not include it in you know the patterns were this long and you made like a full dr wedding dress yes they love to leave things out it is assumed because even though things are getting voca a vocabulary and they're being written and put into pattern books and they're being sold that you're still probably being taught or mentored or tutored by somebody that has experience in that field or in yeah. that art form. So chain one, it's assumed. Everybody knows that. I shouldn't have to tell you that. So they won't tell you that. Chain two, chain three to, to raise your stitch. They won't tell you that. You kind of have to read like the entire row of your next on, on the pattern to know, does that chain three count as a stitch? Because they forget to tell you that too. Yes. They, you, know, you should just know. You should just look at it and you should be able to read it. You should know, does this one actually count as a stitch or does it not count as a stitch? They purposely leave the obvious out because they've got to compress them into all these ladies' journals that were the rage through the 1800s. There's so many ladies' journals, but you've only got this much space to put in a pattern. And so they'll just completely leave things out. I mean, hook size. Oh, That one, it, oh my God. Somebody asked you a question, crazy poppy lady. She says, so did they use terms in, uh, I guess she's saying from the 1850s to the 1870s, closer to UK or US terms? I'm assuming. Only, uh, almost exclusively UK terms. All the way up through the 1920s. You have a couple more questions. Oh, somebody asked, I know you didn't want to hear this, but somebody asked, how long did it take you to make one of those the collars. the collars on yes. average a week on a, on average it takes me a week that's pretty quick um, i mean it's it's crochet is not quick you usually no, think something okay. that takes a week would be much let me, bigger let me, let me quantify that i am privileged enough to be able to literally crochet 12 to 14 hours a day thank you there you go so <laughs> in reality when i say a week we'll give that a full 40 hours so not my, like what break it take it take so, me a month it take, right so um depending on your skill and comfort and you know 40 hours we'll just say 40 hours oh and guys if you have any questions for aida please make sure you put question marks in front of your question and bring it to the front and any question for her i'll make sure she takes a drink of her tequila because i have not seen her <laughs> take a step I'm yet sorry. so girls in the men in the chat oh we got another question Thank you, crazy poppy lady. I would love to get my hands yeah. on one of those patterns to give them a go, even if I have to translate it before I start. Okay. Did you leave me links or anything? Go ahead. Yes, I did. Hopefully she sent links. All right. So the, the vast majority of 
her books have been scanned and are available free for download at my favorite place on the planet, antiquepatternlibrary.org. I live there. Antiquepatternlibrary.org. I absolutely live there. And you select crochet and you scroll through the 300 things. You get down to Riego. Okay. Now her books are named in series. Instead of saying volume, she says book number one is series number one. Book number two is series number two. They have a couple duplicates in there. I think of series number six. Um, but you know, most of them, most of them are there. Um, archive.org. That is okay. like your worldwide internet shopping. It's a little harder to navigate, but um don't you go on. I just pulled <laughs> stuff ahead. I'm sorry, That's I distracted right. you. Just don't look. No, no, no I'm, I'm like reading the, the the what you pulled up there. So the archive.org, you could also find her goods yeah. from that also. Reclectic. Somebody wants to know how, and I named that. Take a sip. Nope. Take a sip. We okay. have a new party tonight, today. <laughs> I can't prepare. I'm I giving you a full cool experience of being on the show. <laughs> By the time it's clocked out, I want you to be like, and then that's what I want you to sound and like. Then, okay, before I answer that, since we are we're making, I'm just gonna segue because what we are drinking is what we are drinking. Yes, I'm drinking tequila, and this is holy water, which is a version of a margarita, and it comes from the past. I know it's gonna be backwards, but hello, anybody about to play Dungeons and Dragons? This is the Dungeon Master, a drink master's guide for those that used to play Dungeons and Dragons. And in here is the beautiful holy water, among other things like a blue mana, a red mana. We've got some um, troll slobber, which the grandkids love troll slobber. <laughs> troll slobber is literally lime, uh, lime sherbet and 7-Up and, and it's troll slobber. So, yes. But I think we found that jungle juice when we were young in high school like when I should have been drinking. So, right. So, but while you're imbibing in your dungeon master drink master guide, you must, of course, have munchies. So we have the drug in my dungeon master cookbook. That is a, an absolutely wonderful fat. Where's my camera? Fabulous stuffed burger right there. I'm just saying. That looks good. That looks real good. Where do you get these? Michaels. Really? Yes, these were in the book section at Michael's. Oh. <laughs> oh, and people the across the pond or someplace else, you got to try Amazon. <laughs> Amazon, but I was like, in Michael's. <laughs> in the books. Like, yeah. Anyway, so that's what we're thinking. You'll have to look it up. It's uh, Anyway, so reclected goods, because I am one very, very eclectic in all things throughout my life, okay? I'm very eclectic. Mm -hmm. Or... If I was had money, I'd be very eclectic. Uh, so I'm, like, I'm just a crazy lady, but I prefer to call it eclectic. Re is because of my grandparents instilling in me the whole idea of repurposing, recreating, reimagining thing. Just look at that bottle and what do you see? I don't see a bottle anymore. It is now going to be a piece of art because I have to. So we repurpose everything. Literally everything, you know. You know, this is not candy anymore. This is a sewing kit, okay? Scissors, stitch markers. Like that. Right? I wouldn't throw that away either. I'm no, sorry. I say I save everything. So if they're printed straight from UK printing, the US started because we're the we're we're the US, all right. We are the colonies. We have been rebels since the 1770s, and we're not going to stop being rebels now. So, hey, why not start renaming stitch patterns? Make it, it our more own. difficult. It. <laughs> that's what we do. We have to. Um, and, and yeah, that's why I liked um, tri tribal style belly dance, because I could dance to anything I wanted to as long as it was inspired, right? Um so the eight by the 18 starting in the 1860s especially with go days ladies magazine you'll start seeing a transition towards uh u.s terms um which is still very very confusing so you really really need to 
read the magazine for read the entire pattern first. Um, when you're looking at antique patterns, try your best to put your mindset in the time of that pattern. I don't care if it's in the 1800s, 19 teens, 1945, go there. Okay, mm -hmm. go there. Because the mentality, the thought process is different. And if you go into these new patterns like I did, I'm just like speaking from experience. If you go into it with, I have 2023 20, knowledge, this is how we do it, you'll mess it up. It will, you will not succeed. You'll look at that going, why is this not making sense? It says to do this. This is not working. It's like, no, because it's not, it, it's not 2023. 20, it's 1823. It's 1923. You have to, and then if it doesn't work or if it's close, pull from your library, begin to apply your knowledge bit by bit to see what works. But you, it's very difficult to directly translate these rewrite these patterns into modern terminology okay mm -hmm. it, it really is <laughs> trust me i i don't rewrite them for anybody but myself and even then it's kind of just making notes like yeah. this means this, this means that because to totally rewrite it one you lose the nuance of the style yeah the way they wrote them they wrote them like word problems those dreaded math word problems okay. yeah <laughs> Yes, that is how the word, sometimes they give you more information you possibly need, and other times they don't give you near enough information, but your job is to pull out of that pattern what information you need. Hook size, good luck with that. Really? <laughs> you serious? I am totally serious. Hook size. How about gauge? Does the gauge exist? Was... Nope. Nope. Where, did I just... Where is it? Okay, as you're looking for the hook size, I got a quick question. Yes. Were course. there a plethora of crochet hooks then like there are now? Those by the 1860s and onward, yes, because what happened was once it becomes an art a a, a validated needle craft. Mm -hmm. The companies out there, predominantly in uh, England, that were making sewing needles and knitting needles, saw a need, fill a need. The problem with that was it was not standardization. So Abel Morell over here is making a size 13 hook, but Walker over here is making a size 13 hook. They probably are close because they're going to be based off of wire gauges. Mm -hmm. All right. So you'll see a lot of times referred to a bell gauge or a wire gauge. So the hook sizes were very often made, you know, okay, it fits this hole. That's how you know that it's the right size. It fits this hole. So they might reference a uh, Penelope Walker number so-and-so or 13 on bell gauge. So hopefully the lady on, in her sewing kit had a bell gauge, which is a wire gauge, and she went, it fits this one. That is how you literally pick your hooks. Why did it become more standardized, like the crochet they hooks? Slowly, 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 the, the demand. The demand. It was just angry we, crafters. <laughs> yeah, they just, hey, we can't deal with this, you know. Um, and because they were, they were, oh my God, they were not only fighting for making the hooks in a standard size, these were works of art. They weren't just always just straight bars with a bent end. They had in, immensely ornate handles on them. They had interchangeable handles on them. They just came, these, these ideas for these crochet hooks came out of the blue. They, um, mm, you've got to just start looking up historical crochet hooks. They are gorgeous. But let me give you an example of how you don't know what size you're using. Okay, so I am have been looking at a petticoat. I will show you which one it is. We will just zoom in. Okay, so this petticoat right oh. here from eight, from 1870. Okay, this is a petticoat. It should be an 18, uh, probably a winter one, but it's still a petticoat, okay? This petticoat is gored. 
which means it has wider sections, which you can see right here. This okay, I'll just ask. Okay, so it it's skinnier at the top than it is the bottom. So this section, whoops, here is a gore. It's just to enlarge it. Okay, materials. Here we go. One pound of wool. Either okay. fingering, either fingering or Angola wool. I'm not really sure what size Angola wool is, but fingering weight is still a standardization. That is still standard. So at least I'm close. I got a fingering weight, but wool, a pound of it. Not yards, a pound. A long and short crochet hook, rather thick ones. Long and short, rather thick? What was considered yep. thick? What's considered exactly. thick when it's like wired? Okay, <laughs> you're creating these beautiful exactly. masterpieces. You're recreating. How are you determining what should I use? Because you don't want it to be so huge when you're done or too small when it's done. How do you figure it out? Okay. <laughs> Lots of trial and error. <laughs> but that, literally, by 1870, you would have expected that this one would have a better size, rather thick ones. I do know that it's Tunisian crochet. Okay. So you just kind of make swatches. Because their standard way of changing the size of like this petticoat is to change your hook size. I need to make it for a child, use a thinner one. I need to make it for my size, I'll use a thicker one. That's the, that's the easiest way to change any size. Wanda says, Aida, mm -hmm. can we hang? I learned from my grandmother to recycle, repurpose everything too. I save all kinds of bottles, jars, and cans. Reuse everything. Yes, can, can you guys hang? We can Actually, hang anytime you want. Yes, this little midnight. guy here, you know. A, Aida's is a midnight olive, crafter drinker too on Instagram. This is olive oil. <laughs> so yes, please come hang with me. Um, I know we haven't much said. I'm on Instagram like every day. I'm a late night person. I'm a night owl. So okay. Um, so I remember I wrote an article on uh, intellectual <laughs> property of crocheters. This is more like uh -huh. in the 2000s. And I'm like, I could not find any record of any crocheters actually suing anybody for infringing on their copyright. But you told me the gangster of crochet didn't play oh, about yeah. her patterns. Can you tell no, me a little she, bit about that? She, you know, Miss Mademoiselle Riego did not play when it came to her patterns. Um, and she made that very clear in like in the preface of several of her books. Okay. Um, you know, I do this to make it easier for the everyday woman to enjoy these crafts and expand her abilities, yada, yada, blah, blah, blah. However, if you steal, basically, if you use this without my permission, I will sue you. <laughs> Just point blank. She's right there. If you, you know, I will sue you. So um, I had hoped to have some of those printed off. So recently, uh, via archive.org, you can access various files from all around the world. There are actually, if you put in her name, Eleanor, blah, 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 the whole thing, and you surf long enough through all these files, you will see British court cases where she literally was suing people for copyright infringement. You know, every. Many, I know you don't get an exact hour, number, but how many did you come across? I, I've 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 seen twenty of them. Twenty. She didn't play about her money and her patterns. No, no. She very very plainly in the in the preference that the, every pattern in this book is caught is covered or protected under copyright. Blah 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 for the UK. And then if you um, want to sell this, if you want to do this, you have to have my permission. And um, uh, you know, uh, there's been I've like you know. I've seen um, goods uh, without saying names. She like she'll put it just she'll put it in print in her next book. I've seen this done, blah blah blah. It's not mine unless it has this on it. It's not mine. If you want to do this, I'll sue you. You know, no, she was not about um, playing around with you. And 
in part um, because of her extreme talent, because um, OMG, I'm just saying, there there are pieces that I hope to do by the end of the year, but my skill set is not even there yet, period. Um, She was named um, as uh, elite needlework artist to her Royal Highness Princess of Wales. Oh wow! Um, so, yeah. Question: so those, Do you think she interacted interviews? with like Queen Victoria? Because yeah. I know she crocheted. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's probably she going to talk. Mm-hmm. Ooh, I did. See, I was oh, just yeah, trying to had... piece two and two together. <laughs> no, she she fully used her um, stature because, like I said, she was born into a French aristocracy. Um, and then, um, she used that to further knitting, netting, tatting, crochet, give it name, give it language. Um, it was at a time when, like I said, the industrial revolution was happening. Those that had means wanted to have the frills. Those who didn't have means, the potato famine. All right. Yeah. Communities came together and organized to crochet to feed families to survive. The potato famine to just survive. Um, found she had a couple different foundations regarding meat regarding the needle arts that were funded on um, uh, uh through her. And I believe that there's still one in place uh that has her name attached to it that is to fund and recognize um the, those who are specializing or exceeding in the needle arts to this okay. day so she did give back to i mean she gave to a class of people that were not her class she was but in recognition that they needed to have this knowledge so she, schools were set up um the industrial revolution and the potato famine really just hurtled crochet into um modern day thinking that it's not just Pretty. Yeah. Tana Fam Irish, right? That was what, 1840 to set. What was it? Somewhere around that time? Eight, or 60, 1840, 60? 1840, yeah, 1846-ish, 45, 46, mm-hmm. 47. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, and guys, if you have any questions for Aida right now, make sure you put question marks in front so we can bring it up to the top. And I have I'm another. Thirsty. You have ask to- questions. Come on. Ask, Come on. Questions, ask questions so we both can drink. I'm thirsty. Please. I'll drive. Okay. I, am. <laughs> I got a question. Do you have any bigger items to show us that you've made from an older pattern? Okay. Yes. My favorite. Do you get the favorite stitch too? Which one do you want? <laughs> the star stitch. Yeah. I want a star stitch. Okay. She wants but this. it's so beautiful though. She wants this piece. She wants Wait. this. Guys, before she tells you what how what year do you think this was? Does not this not look like something that was created recently? Type it in the comments. But now you can continue. You can tell us the take year because take a guess on what year this is. But it's amazing where people say, "Oh, and it's not it's... your grandma's pattern." Yes, no, it is, is your, your grandma's this pattern. This is your great, great, great grandmother's pattern i'm gonna add a de- great grandmother's all right so i'll get as close as i can with because i cannot see this okay, is this a good great, distance great 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 grand okay okay we got oh we got some guesses okay right now we got 1850 1867 actually tell me what you got they're starting to come in what year is it okay who said 1867 magic owl studio do they know you Yes, she That's does. Specific. That's <laughs> specific. Yes, she does. Yes, she does. She knows me. <laughs> okay, so this piece is a large, but it is a crossover shawl. Quite a large one, actually. This entire body is a star stitch. It is the Marguerite star stitch, as a matter of fact. So it does not turn. You work one way, one way, one way. Okay. Mm-hmm. There's no turning and putting in a row of single crochet or anything. It's constantly a star stitch. You stop here, you go back to the end, you tie on, you go again. 
Uh, this is from French magazine, La Mode Illustré. And this piece is crocheted to a paper pattern. You would have had a pattern in the magazine. You lay it out and you crochet to fit the contours of the pattern. Like sewing. Like sewing. Exactly. So basically, if you had a sewing pattern, you could crochet to it. <laughs> now, this one. You didn't show me that one, I don't think. <sighs> okay. Staying in 1867. And my beloved Mademoiselle Riego is this piece. This is a winter petticoat. It's a skirt. That looks like my butt will stay warm forever. <laughs> get this get close a, with the stitches. This is wow. done in, this is Tunisian simple stitch. Nothing difficult about it. This is the basic Tunisian simple stitch with a little bit of ruffly at the end. But it is just, just a Tunisian simple stitch. The Victorians loved Tunisian crochet. I'll tell you that right now. For things like undergarments, again, this is a winter petticoat. This is wool, very lightweight, but very, but it's wool. Um, that is actually for a contest for foundations revealed. <laughs> but again, Mademoiselle Riego, and I forgot to bring the third piece over here. Okay. And from the same book that the skirt is in, which is, I'll show that to you, is the reticule muff. Again, this is Tunisian crochet. We have a bicolor. Bring muffs back. Forget me. I love, I know. Back. I love muffs. But this one, they call it a reticule because, oh, I can open it. It has a pocket. So even in 1867, we needed pockets. They never it has a pocket. <laughs> it has a pocket. So this is why this one is called a reticule muff. It is a bicolor. Well, if usually this outside piece would have been a bicolor Tunisian, which is one color one way, bring it back in the other. The inside is just solid Tunisian simple stitch. This trim is very convoluted. I will eventually be putting up a tutorial on how to do that because apparently Mademoiselle Riego liked this faux fur trim. It's not, it's very I loopy, did. but she liked it. So she used it on several, several pieces. So we have, but it's just your basic Tunisian simple stitch, but they really did love crochet Tunisian. Okay, we got some questions for you. And you can start looking out for, pull out another one, but now here's a question. Uh, uh -huh. I saw a crochet knitting video on Facebook the other day. Will it be wrong for me to download? I have been wondering about it. Oh, uh, I don't know about that. I don't understand exactly the question. You can download if you're not selling somebody else's or recreating or trying to make a profit off of somebody else's written or recorded work. Yeah, just don't sell it. Yes. Just don't claim it as your design. Okay. You can you can recreate you can make somebody else's pattern. You can sell that, but you cannot claim it as being your design or your pattern. So mm -hmm. I can through Crystal, I I have made several of these posy tops, and I do not claim this as being my design. I made it. I can sell it. I cannot claim design. I cannot claim the design. Then I'm in copyright infringement. Yes. Didi says, do you have a picture of the godmother crochet? Mademoiselle I, uh, Riego. Let's see. I Yes. Give me a moment. Give me I can a Google moment. it maybe, but I can't spell Mademoiselle. <laughs> if you spell it out for me, I can Google it. No, I have, Madam. We have one. We have one. Just put in Riego. Okay. You might find it. Uh, but I okay. do have one here. Just there she is. Got it for you. There okay. you go. Good. Oh, that's better. That's a nice, clear picture. There you go. That is Mademoiselle Eleanor Riego de la Ronchardier. Yeah, she looks like she don't play. <laughs> right? <laughs> she might cut somebody. I don't know. Oh. Oh, take a sip. Take a sip. So, we asked a question. Is that is our godmother. And I refer to her as the godmother because her work is just absolutely fabulous. 
actually, if you think about it, she set the path or she made the rule book. She set the bar so high. It is, I mean, it is incredible. If you think, we, we still so, follow it today. We have so many very, very talented designers out there. Not to take away from any of them. But you know what? I take away because I've never considered myself like a great crochet designer. I just like to crochet and I like to record myself while doing it. <laughs> right? To be the person who makes the rule book, to make what we follow for 150 years later. Yeah, to see what we're going at. So, okay. Just to give an example, not the best print. I'm sorry. My printer doesn't like to print very good. But even by modern standards, you see this piece? That's crochet? That's crocheted. What were you saying? That uh, that bobbin lace? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought that would take my life time to do. Right. So what I, I love laces, but I'm not about to do bobbin and I'm not about to do needle lace. She was absolutely brilliant in using crochet to emulate many of the lace styles of the Victorian era. So she has pieces that you look at and you think, was that typical needle lace? Nope. Was that bobbin lace? Nope. They are crochet. And like you said, that's why we love it. I mean, the average person that wasn't rich, that couldn't afford that, could exactly. potentially make it themselves. Exactly. And the one of the absolute things I I, I adore about her is if you go back, if you are at all interested in her, start with book one. Because every series after that, you'll learn something new. You will continue to build your skill set. So whereas I started in four, <laughs> yeah, then go back like, again. I had to go back. So I went back to number one and I went, oh, and I just started making these collars and turn the page, make the next collar. And I just became totally just sucked into this hole. And so, yeah, I have, there's number 18 right there. This is her 18th book. <laughs> you know, I so went through and I- She was putting out, how many patterns were in a book? Cause I feel like how long it would take to um, make all these and she's putting out patterns. Yeah. The smallest one I believe only has three in it. And it is for a larger, um, I think that's number 13, actually. It's a larger, they're larger pieces. They're lace, but they're much larger pieces. So she has broken them up into sections. Therefore, the patterns are longer. And could you, she, I was about to say, could, could you read me like a row from one of the patterns? I would like to hear what it sounds like if if you can. Sure. Um, okay, let's see. We'll, be, we'll just start whatever this one is. Let's let's have a picture to go with what I'm going to read to you. Let's see. Find the picture. Find the picture. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll get to this one here sooner or later. Okay, so this piece here is referred to as the medallion collar. It has little medallions friggin' in it. I don't get it. I don't... Go okay, ahead. Sorry. Exactly. I'm too excited. Exactly. So, so you do have to make each one of these medallions throughout the piece, and then you go back and you will join them Okay. Okay. This is why you need book number three. So you know how to do this. Just saying. I didn't know that. I do know that now, but yeah, book number three. All right. So this is the medallion collar. Um, we are going to commence with 20 chain. And for the first leaf, we're going to turn. Notice I didn't say turn back. So am I working around or am I around. flipping it over we're going to miss one okay and we're going to seven single which are okay. slips slip stitches okay I would have messed up okay right? continue all right and then we're going to turn so I've done seven single and I'm going to and turn 
shift. Yeah. Okay. okay. So I've done a chain and I've done seven single crochet. So seven slip stitches. Sorry, not single slip stitches. And then I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to turn it. Okay. Not turn back, but turn it. And I'm going to one chain to cross the stem. So this is what you, you do. Messed, you you one chain across the stem. I have taken, I've done my chain. I've worked up this side of it. Now I'm going to turn it so I can work on this side of it. Okay. But I want to get over here. So I'm going to chain one to help me get over here. That's, oh. how we cross, that's how we cross this chain. Instead of just turning and trying to get around this corner, because I don't necessarily want a corner, I want to get over here to this side. So I'm going to keep working the work this way, but I'm going to come here. I'm going to chain one to put me onto this side without flipping the work. It's a chain one. To, we do this all the time. This is how you work across a piece. You chain one to get to the other side. We're going to one chain across the stem and up the other side. We're going to... Okay. Two chain, two chain, two chain. Okay, <laughs> right. Not chain two, but two chain. Three treble in one stitch. That's a double crochet. Okay, that's our double crochet. So by eighteen, let me verify. Eighteen fifty-five. She has now started to use things like double crochet, treble crochet. She has not everybody. Miss, we want to talk about Miss Lambert. She makes me mad. Um, so we have three treble in one stitch. Then we do two trebles. Two plain. A plain is a single crochet. Okay, I was about to ask. I'm... <laughs> Still not using things like double crochet, but a plain is a single crochet stitch. So we have one treble, double crochet, two treble. Notice she did not tell you to do it in the next stitch. Yeah. Okay. You should know or three is not. Treble, three treble in one stitch, comma, two treble. Okay, there's a comma. So it's next stitch? There you go. Okay. We're going to work two plain. Two single. There you go. Two singles, which are slip stitches. Slip stitches. I feel like it's a quiz. Yes. Say it. I'll guess what it is. Keep going. <laughs> then two chain at the point. So by this time, because we only have a really short chain, starting chain, we should have worked to the other end at the point. We should be at the other end of that of that starting chain. So we're working around the starting chain. But no, she didn't say two treble in next two stitches. She just said two treble. Yeah. Two singles. I feel like if two I was plain. to create this today with my knowledge, I would just crochet a hot mess trying to do this. Right. So if you do one sing, you do so we did do, do, one single in the same stitch as the three treble. Are you going so back? The, Hold on. The previous round that you went around oh. and you did three over here. By the time you get back around to those three, you're going to put in a single in the same. This is dimensional. So you have three double crochets and I've worked back over here. I'm going to go back into that hole right there and I'm going to put in this slip stitch. I just made it dimensional. It's going to cause it to probably, probably to fold over. It's going to take, you know, fold over. So I've just made it dimensional because I can tell from this pattern that these are somewhat dimensional. I mean, from the picture, there, there's a little, there's levels. It's not all flat work. It's Got a little bit of dimension to it. Yeah. So we're going to plain ch uh, six chain turn, miss two, one treble. And before finishing the flower, work 14 chains. Okay. 14 chains. That's the what I got. All the chains I got in this <laughs> pattern. I got every single chain right without you telling me. So, yeah. So, yeah. But like I said, this is the, the really weird thing. Well, interesting thing is on these collars. On these collars, ex uh, in particular this one right here, except mm -hmm. for these roses, except for the roses, this is one continuous strand. Who's going to ask that? How is each, I, I don't want to call them all motifs, but how is 
it's row by row, but also go, unique. We are going to go, we're going to start here and we're going to work our way around and we're going to work our way back. We're going to stop. Okay. Like, actually, I think this one okay, goes up here. We'll start, we'll say, we'll start here. We're going to work. I'm um, sorry, backwards. We're going to work this section. Uh -huh. All right. And then we're going to chain so many over here and we're going to start the next section and we're going to chain so many and then it'll start this next section. So there. Oh, so it's the base it's is this, but then it's section, 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 but they're all connected. All right. So I need to chain 12 for the stem to get up like 12 for the stem to get up here. I work mm -hmm. this leaf. I work that leaf. I come back down the stem. I chain five. I work that leaf. I come back to the main stem. I work the next leaf. I come back to the main stem. And you just keep doing that back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. That oh. all of her call, you know, they're all one continuous piece of yarn. Random question. Take a drink. Do you have any other bags made from the 1800s? That time period. I do not. I will be this year putting out bags and uh well miser bags reticules um from 1870 through 1890 probably because i'm gonna add I, I i haven't done any bead work in a very long time and so i'm going to incorporate my beads with my crochet so i will be putting out some beaded bags okay did you take a sip i don't know did you drink sorry i'm drinking okay magic owl studios would her plain stitch be both loops or the back loop only? Okay. Traditionally, well, you did tell me about that. Traditionally, throughout the Victorian era, all right, the 1800s, when crochet is given a name, when everybody knows how to do it, when you can read the pattern, it is assumed that your stitches are worked in the back loop only, unless otherwise stated. Okay. Every single pattern? Every pattern. When did they start having both loops as the end all be all? Because, you know, I remember taking one of the crochet to be the crochet mm -hmm. teaching course. I think Crochet Guild of America, whatever it was. But they're like, the proper way is through two loops. When did that officially become <laughs> right? the best way to crochet? Right. You know, that I am, I have not yet found that firm, firm segue between the two. But it was really just a, it, it, even up and through the 1940s, it's pretty well assumed that you're working in that back loop unless otherwise stated. It is also assumed, unless otherwise stated with turn or turn back, that your work starts at this end, works here, cut the thread, come back, work the work, cut the thread, come back. So it's probably the super lazy crochet that says, no, we just keep going. We're going to okay. figure it out. No, that, and that is part of what messed me up on when I first started. I did not understand the start here, get here, cut, come back. The, our math and geometry does in fact change when you turn that work over and work back. Mm -hmm. You're stitching where that hook goes does in fact change when you turn that work over. And I could not make these rows work. I'm like the counts, I'm counting stitches going, okay, I've got a hundred. What's the problem? It's because when you turn it, actually where you place it is not the same as when it is on this side. And mm -hmm. then it occurred to me. And then I finally realized, oh, okay. I now understand this little bit of instruction. I'm supposed to start here, get here, cut, rejoin, slip it, cut. Stitches like standing, single, standing double crochets, chainless starting chains. How old uh, do you think those are? Um, don't know. Who we'll say? Don't know. Look at towards 150 years old. Really? Yes. That is how you work. Starting, you've done your foundation chain. You've done the back to that row now we need to cut i need to make double crochets all the way across this row you don't join and chain three you make a chainless double crochet yeah. right from the beginning 
like, as early as the 1850s, the standing double crochet. I feel like you learning this has made you the queen of frogging. <laughs> I there is no way lot. to learn any of this without frogging your life away. Exactly. Oh. I was really like, you know, because I had, I mean, before, before I dove into this, I had really just threw a camera, a moogly blog, okay? Mm -hmm. That's where I learned the standing or chainless starting double crochets yeah. and things like that. I never, I did, did like everybody else. We joined and we chained three, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, I learned from watching her how to do the chainless so you don't have that chain on the ends of your work. It's not new. It's 150 years old. Okay. Did he say it sounds a lot? I know nothing about tatting. I know what it looks like, but tatting? I know. Yes. Okay. Or do you write a tat tatting? No, <laughs> so I do not. No, no, no. I do like to look at tatting. Um, it is not in my wheelhouse and it's not going to be in my wheelhouse. I am resisting the temptation, therefore. Um, but um yeah, tatting is one of those, it's, you know, uh, can be done with the shuttle. Some tatting wheels, uh, shuttles actually have hooks on them. There is also crochet tatting, crow tatting, um, that can be done with a standard thread hook and um, looks very much like shuttle tatting. They're very, very close. Um, but, uh, but again, it's continuous. It's very continuous in its matter. So make this leaf part, part, part portion here, chain six, make another leaf, come back to the main. So that's kind of like what tatting does. It's back to the main, over here, back to the main. And so you're always working off like a main chain. You're coming back to it and coming back to it. And eventually you'll fill up that main chain and you'll have to make another main chain. And then you, you work back across it. And you, and that is how your pieces grow um, a, you know, around or however you're making we have one last, if anybody else has any questions for Alita, please comment down below. <laughs> I got one. It's not a question, yeah. but I just want to, the professional, to verify what I said on the past couple li lives, that worsted weight yarn is not worsted. a weight. She <laughs> is the person who taught me. I was on a live stream, midnight, drinking wine on Instagram, and like... <laughs> And I popped up. Worsted like, is not a weight. Worsted is a process. <laughs> um, and I purpose and I stick by that. And I am purposefully not. I catch myself, but I'm not referring to medium weight number four CYC graded yarn as worsted. Worsted is not a weight. It is a process. Best explained. It comes from a long time ago. I can pull, I'll actually I'll pull the dictionary up here. I can read it to you. But so you get this all the wool off the sheep, okay? And it's it's hair. So we go through and we have just now took in the curry comb to the first part to the hair. But you get up in the morning and you brush the hair to get the tangles out, right? But it's still not perfect because it's not laying where you want it. So I have brushed it. That is woolen. But I need this to be perfect. So you get the fine tooth comb so that the hairs all line in the same direction. Everything is smooth. That is worsted. It does With not my matter. my baby hairs compared to my hair. I get so the fine comb for the baby hairs. Yes, you get the <laughs> fine hair. It does not matter what the fiber is. Worsted is merely the last final line process to get the fibers to align parallel and as long as they possibly can be. That is worsted. Worsted can be a fingering weight. It can be a bulky weight. It can be a four weight. Worsted is a process. Over the years, marketing. Okay, can we just say marketing? So yes. they came out with a medium weight yarn. We had fingering, baby, sport, DK. There's this odd one in there. Hmm. Okay. It used to be stated on the band bar on the ball band, knitting worsted type. Type. 
because the fibers are nicely nicely elongated. They lay out beautifully. They knit up very nice and neat. There's not a lot of halo and fuzzy stuff happening. You've smoothed it down. You've combed it out. It went from knitting worsted type, knitting worsted style, knitting worsted, worsted. It's marketing. But I have a ball band from a bamboo cotton blend that's fingering, and it says worsted. Oh, I'm trying to look. Do I still have your images in my computer? You probably oh, where do. Where are they? I Keep talking. I'm going to look for the images in my computer that I downloaded. <laughs> oh, found them. Here we go. Found them? Share my screen. Oh, I got it. It's cool. <laughs> oh, you have it too? <laughs> uh, no, I was going to pull out the dictionary. Okay. The Dictionary of Needlework, 1882. <laughs> there we go. This is, All right, guys. Um, this is... um. An encyclopedia of artistic, plain, and fancy needlework. And fancy. I like that. That's a professional name. Yeah. <laughs> and fancy needlework. But again, it is a dictionary, encyclopedia kind of version. And let's go to wool. T U V W W W W W. When you're looking for that, I'm going to show them what it looks like with uh, the yarn that you showed me. Here we go. Look, here we go. Marketing. Where's the next? How do I go to the next one? There's one. Where's the bamboo you were talking about? Here's the bamboo. There you go. Worsted. This weight. Is worsted. I guarantee you that is a fingering weight yarn right there. I have used. Okay. And it says worsted. So it's very, very confusing if you go like ice yarns, middle 70s knitting style. If you go ice yarns, knitting worsted type. See? Type yarn. Yeah. Nuts. Like you it's, you blew my mind. Nuts. That was the biggest <laughs> crocheter mind of my fur. Now I feel like a smart crocheter now because of you. It is, like I said, um hold on. There we go. Okay. Worsted. A class of yarn well twisted and spun of long staple wool varying in lengths from three inches to 10 inches. Again, we're talking about a time when wool was still pretty much the predominant method. Um, it's a 10 inches, which after being cleansed is combed to lay the fibers parallel before it is spun and afterwards wound on reels and twisted into hanks. Drop the mic. That is what worsted is. It's the uh, final process of combing it out so the fibers lay parallel and smooth. Miss Leanne, oh my God. She this says, lady okay, is fabulous. <laughs> she says, okay, but you know I'm going to slip and say worsted when it's not. But of course, your girl, uh, Magic Owl, says, ever since you told me that it was a four midway, she says it. It's like the church of Aida. She gives you some information like, <laughs> Amen. You're right. I believe it. You prophesy in this box is biblical. You know, because even if you go to the Craft Yarn Council and you look up a number four, they still, they even use worsted. Um, they it don't. Gets they say the, refer to. They don't say refer worsted. To, refer yeah. to as. Refer to as. Um, typically, if you like go to Michael's, Joanne's, whatever the yarn store, and you're looking at the four weights, okay? If you come across one, which are rare, I'm pretty sure Lion Brand's the only one I can think of immediately, that has an Aran weight. Yeah. The Aran is on the thick side of the what the U.S. considers to be a four weight. It is can almost, almost fall over into a bulky five. But an Aran weight is a weight. Aran is a weight. It's not a worsted. It's a, it's actually a weight, okay? So, Typical four weights, as the CYC has designated for uh, years, um, are a little bit, little bit lighter than an Aaron. Okay. Well, so. I think we're going to wrap this up. We've been going, I told <laughs> you just an hour, but we went like okay. an hour and 25. 
<laughs> we can do this again because you're so packed full of information. I want to. I would be thrilled to. I'm thrilled to it. And Miss Karen, if you're out there, please. I would like to do a trio. I would love to do a, a thing with Miss Karen also. Me too. I'm gonna uh, put Karen in a headlock. I can't find her. <laughs> I'm like I'm lost without her. I'm gonna make sure I timestamp this and send it to her so she knows to get on this right channel here. right now or else. <laughs> no, so right. for the most part, like I said, when we started, I am on I live on Instagram. I am a night owl, so you will see me come in, just do random lives. We'll just sit and chat on Central Time, so 9 p.m., 10 p.m. is when I kind of come on, and I'm usually on to like 2 a.m., all right? I am a night owl. Um, I do have some tutorials up there in my series. They're in the series uh, from lives, unfortunately. They're lives, so they're longer tutorials than we are used to on YouTube. I intend to... Uh, Refilm those in YouTube user friendly, shorter. <laughs> I mean, really, I think the Columbia Star Stitch one is like over an hour long, but it was a live, okay? And <laughs> we just kind of got talking. So I will put those over, but I am I'm on Instagram. Add, all the time. I'm about to add five more minutes. I don't mean to, but I think <laughs> the world needs you. I'm, I'm dead, dead serious. Are you going to go there? Are you seriously going to go there? I'm saying you, the world needs you. If without your information, we won't learn. There's not people like you that's online teaching us turn, turn back, plane. What the heck is a plane? What? <laughs> you, are, are we going to go to the pineapple stitch? Oh, we forgot the pineapple stitch. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm already drunk. I'm drunk. Take a sip so you can catch up with me. Take a sip. Okay. Yeah. I actually refilled. I, I refilled when y'all weren't looking. Okay. <laughs> Guys, before she goes into the pineapple stitch, everybody close your eyes. Imagine the pineapple stitch. Do you see it in your head? It's a lie. It's a lie. <laughs> Tell them what the pineapple stitch and motif is. It's a lie. It's a lie. <laughs> Okay, yes. And it's a lie. All right. The pineapple stitch. You don't have it ready? <laughs> no, I, I, have, I, have, I, I have the pineapple stitch. I was looking for the motif. Oh, okay. I was looking for the example of the motif, which is, where is it? As she's looking, I'm okay, going to so explain. We all know, okay. basically, if, well, I think everybody here knows what the pineapple stitch looks like. That mm -hmm. is not a stitch. It is a motif. It is a lie. Okay? A motif is a series of stitches, multiple rows, to achieve a shape, an element, a visual look. So that thing that we call the pineapple stitch, which is God only knows how many rows on um, different people. All right. That right there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. That is a motif. All right. We have lots and lots and lots of motifs. We have motifs. We have elements. We have stitches. You see this? That's a stitch, not a motif. <laughs> That is a stitch. The pineapple stitch does exist. 1915, Columbia, Book of the Use of Yarns. Right there. It's a stitch. Not a book. <laughs> Drop the mic. Right? Walk out the room. It's a stitch. That is the pineapple stitch. <laughs> when you explain it, it made sense. I'm like, because when I looked at the pineapple stitch before, I'm like, it is not, it's a, a whole bunch of stitches row by row, and you got to do counts correctly right. and blah, blah, so blah. That you get, so that you re get this visual shape. And that, in that by definition, is a motif. Wait, okay. wait, wait. Vergy says, so a star stitch is a motif as well? No. Hmm. No. Star stitch in itself is a stitch pattern. The star stitch is most, okay, stitch patterns, like the pineapple stitch, 
the Balkan stitch, the Marguerite stitch are usually completed in one sequence, one row, like the popcorn stitch, your bobble stitches, bean stitches. Okay? Got you. Completed in row. Motifs require multiple rows to achieve the visual. Ooh. So essentially a star stitch really is only one row. It's sometimes two, but questionable. Okay, this goes with the star stitch. <laughs> the marguerite. The difference in star stitches, the marguerite is a five leg star stitch worked in one direction only. Okay. Do you know you're smart? Angela did the um, bag crochet along with me. So she got to learn how to do the star, the five legged star stitch, also known as a marguerite. The Europeans like to name stitches after their princesses. So there is a Josephine, mm. a Marguerite, um, the Lover's Knot, the Solomon's Knot. They're the same stitch, right? They like to name them after things like that. Did not know so that. The Marguerite stitch is a five-legged star stitch, but works only in one direction. So it's very, very suited for bags to work in the round. Mm. If, you work it in pieces, if you work it like this, like I did for this piece here, it pulls on the bias very, very hard, and you have to forcibly block it back out. It pulls really hard on the bias. All right, Wanda says, do you have a book explaining all the stitches and how to crochet vintage style? If not, you should write one. <laughs> no, there are a few books out there that, well, there are Describing vintage style. Um, actually, no, there aren't. I can't even think of anybody that's actually like, hey, this is, equals this, this equals that. I predominantly have made myself a series of cheat sheets. So as I come across new information, so we have... Um, so crochet journals, all right? And I like this crochet journal, and I'm going to keep carrying. So in this particular journal, they gave us a typical modern hook chart. And as I learn things, I come across and I have written in bell 17, bell being the bell gauge. The bell 17 is a 1.5 millimeter equals a Penelope number two. I make myself cheat sheets. I have a ton of cheat sheets. You belong on the back of a cover of a book like this holding a hook. <laughs> <laughs> with your information but guys don't worry aren't you writing for a magazine that currently i'm hoping yes yes please crochet fashion week magazine cfwmagazine.com thank you i will give that shout out um yes i have been graciously asked to come aboard as the crochet historian you need uh, to be <laughs> i will be presenting historical tidbits on our trade um whether it be for a particular yarn company or about a needle company about something in fashion not necessarily always something in fashion but definitely something historical regarding our art form because this is art form i mean i have so many stitches up here okay pineapple stitches pine stitches cosmo stitches just my brain you know <laughs> Just think um, you don't you truly I truly don't think you know how smart because when you speak, you speak as the information is nonchalant, as if the world knows, <laughs> and each word that you say is a brand new fact in my head. I'm like, wait, wait stop, what? Yeah, and and You're I, I, think I, told you, I had a basically computer crash in January. Yeah. And two to three years of my downloads, researches, translations, because La Mode Illustre is printed in French. Got to translate all that. Gone. It's gone. I am in the process of rebuilding that. But I am, I am blessed with a clear enough mind that I know where to go get that. So I can rebuild my library. It's like, oh yeah, I go here. It should be here. Uh -huh. so I'm, I'm having to rebuild my library. Redundant saving 
you know, this file, this drive, this drive, all everything plugging in, um, and nothing stays plugged in anymore, period. It's like, yeah. are we done saving? Yes, unplug it, you know, um, redundancy. But um, I do think that talking like in this setting or all my chats in the evenings, just uh, verbalizing what I may learn today helps embed it into my head because now we have right side and left side working simultaneously. Mm -hmm. And so if you can get all your hemispheres working, even if you're talking to yourself, I talk to, I sit and talk to myself like cliche. Okay. My mother always said, when you talk to yourself, you're talking to the most important person in the world. <laughs> I, I, well, you know, we, we have conversations and we don't always agree all, however many of us are in here. Um, <laughs> three you know when i was when i was coming up was talking to yourself was a sign of insanity um i just like yeah but it's the best conversation i've had all day right really <laughs> it's true like, it's yeah we we totally agree to disagree with ourselves <laughs> okay well crazy poppy lady says uh that stitch looks like one of one i have done under a different name the primrose See? in my head do you know the that pineapple, I, Okay, the pineapple stitch or the clar, clarify real quick for us if you can. The pineapple stitch, which is this one right here, mm -hmm. or the marguerite star stitch. Okay. On YouTube, there's gonna be a 20 second delay. So she'll probably reply in like 20 seconds. No, that's yeah. fine. Cause I I do uh yeah, I I'm thinking she might be correct that the primrose should be fairly similar. There is there is another stitch. I'll probably remember at two o'clock this morning that looks very more modern. Um, 1950s, I believe. That looks very similar to this particular uh, pineapple stitch. And she might be right. It might be the primrose. I'm, I'm like, what stitch? I don't know. I cannot <laughs> wait. To re I do all these I, videos I want to make that you're giving me these information on. I'm like, I can't wait. Like, I'm still putting together. I did this <laughs> speech on the worst of weight yarn. I'll release that next week. If you have any articles you want me to just read online to people, I will do it. It's just so interesting. I'm too drunk to speak yeah, slowly. Was, but yeah, so that was quite, I mean, just like everybody who watches today. So um I like, like I said, I do research, research on all kinds of things. I, you know, I've done the family genealogy on all sides of my family back to God knows when creation began. All right. To God. I love <laughs> research. You don't even want to know what my science, my science fair experiments back in grade school, junior high. I discovered that aspartame should not be fit for human consumption back when I was in eighth grade. All right. I have been avoiding it that long. Do not eat that stuff. It causes migraines. If you have migraines, do not eat anything that has aspartame in it. It is, it is known to spark migraines. Just saying. Anyway, so I came across this book here, the Dictionary of Needlework. This is a reprint, but the original was done in 1882. Just flipping through. I mean, it's needlework. So we have crochet. We have embroideries. We have knitting, tatting, netting macrame, blah, 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 blah. And I'm just looking through. And that's when I came across the first the first time I had referenced that worsted is not a weight, it's a process. Okay. I'm just doing what I do. And I'm going through, there's like a dictionary of dry goods. I think, I believe that's what it's actually called, a dictionary of dry goods. That's weird. And yarn is a dry good. You would go to the store, you get your, that's to the dry goods store. Wets are like the deli, the butcher, okay? You go to the deli, the butcher, the dairyman. So dry goods were anything that didn't have to be preserved, you know? Yeah. And, um, you know, yarns, wools, fabrics being by, usually by weight, not by yardage, but by weight. So again, description of worsted. I got you reading it. I was like, and there is, I didn't, I couldn't bring it to you today. We can do it again. We'll follow up on that on how to know your yarn size based on its weight. Okay. There, there is, there are formulas for how much does a pound of wool weigh? How much does a pound of cotton weigh? And then once you ply it, how much does it weigh? 
how much does it weigh? So that comes in very helpful when you're on like ice yards and it says it's a 50 gram ball, but it's 400 yards versus this 50 gram ball at 192 yards. Yeah, that's definitely it. See, that's another video I can read. That's amazing. <laughs> but so there uh, are there there is math for that. The pineapple. Okay, yes, I do believe that they are they are very very close to the same stitch. And okay, I would, she said <laughs> she'll be shocked. <laughs> I do. I'm pretty. I I, I know which one you're. I do believe I know which one you're talking about. I would have to find it, but I think it's naming probably doesn't occur World War II ish time. So I'll have to look at more, more more current books and see if I can find it. But I I think I know which exactly which one you're talking about, and they are going to be pretty darn close to the same stitch. Wanda wants to know: Are you a Capricorn? We're so much alike. No. <laughs> I am the most stubborn Taurus you've ever met. <laughs> we still love you. I have full on sharpened horns. horns. At all. <laughs> but Jay Crochet says, while you are rebu rebuilding your library, would you make a video so we can learn what you are redoing? A tutorial? <laughs> See, Ray, you are most. Doing, you know that, uh, you that want, commercial, the most interesting man in the world, the Daseki, Daseki, Daseki man. The you're Daseki, the woman. The you're Daseki her. guy. So, okay, so VJ, you want like my camera set up behind me, watching me research to rebuild my library to put on all my flash drives. You're not like, Instagram, what, girl. <laughs> how how do I go about finding my information and that kind of thing? Okay, yeah. maybe, maybe just the behind the scenes watching over my shoulder as I look for stuff. Listen, okay. now we're gonna wrap up now. We're hitting in the uh 145. <laughs> we hit you, 20 you were, minutes. You past. were asking if an hour was going to be long enough, and I warned I you that we I could know. Go. <laughs> I know. Especially when the drink starts flowing in me and I'm getting excited. I think my arm pad things are shifting. You know what I'm talking about, but we are going to wrap it up this time. You stay behind Absolutely. the scenes, but guys, thank you so much for joining us live. Thank you, everyone. Questions, like I said, I'm on Instagram almost every single night. I'm a night owl, so just if you don't, uh, Instagram eclectic underscore goods. I'm on Facebook. Uh, the YouTube channel is up, but it does very minimal content. I'm going to fix that in this year. Uh, cfwmagazine.com yes i'll be putting that out so please follow those over on all the platforms and there was something else i forgot oh follow me on instagram you'll know everything i'm doing yeah and all her information is linked down in the description box below all right guys thank you so much for joining me i'll be here next week and we'll see you next time bye guys let me click